Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a very exciting AOS projects update because I'm going to be announcing the launch of three new frame kits that you can try today. I'm wearing my mountain dive t-shirt from store.aosrc.com because these frame kits are for long range. We're going to be looking at the brand new AOS UL7 V5 UL8 V5 and the massive UL10 V5. And these frames are going to be the best that you can get for long range cruising or fast chase work. They can be built out as X4 or X8 for even more power and speed. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you through all the key features of these new frames on the bench. We're going to be looking at the build, some black box logs and some flight footage. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to be letting you know where you can get hold of these frame kits and try them out today. And you can also find all the links you need down in the video description as well. A lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Let me introduce you to the AOS UL7 V5 on the bench. And the first thing you're going to notice looking at this frame is the vertical truss arm structure. This consists of two vertical pieces of carbon fiber coming out from the frame and meeting at the motor mount. And this design has several advantages over a traditional six or even eight millimeter thick arm for a seven inch drone. Firstly, it's enormously stiffer than that type of construction in all the key vibration directions, vertically, forward and back, and torsionally as well. It also weighs significantly less than a typical six or eight millimeter thick arm, which helps reduce the weight outboard of the frame and therefore improve responsiveness, particularly in fast flips and rolls. And because with two pieces of carbon fiber orientated vertically, we minimize the blocking of the thrust column from the prop, which improves propulsive efficiency. On the UL7 V5, we've slightly thickened the vertical trusses from 2.5 to 3 millimeters. And the reason for that is that we want to be able to support X8 motor mounting. If you decide to go with the X8 version of this frame, you're going to be getting eight of these motor mounting plates rather than four, and you're gonna be able to mount a motor on the top and bottom of each arm so that you can run either an X4 or an X8 configuration if you wish. Adding that second motor underneath the arm increases the overall weight on the end of the arm, so we wanted to stiffen up the truss slightly so that it can handle that extra weight without transmitting any vibration through into the footage. And if you're looking for a fast chase drone that has an X8 configuration, then, um, this frame is going to be exactly what you need to support that with 7 inch props. If you're planning an X8 build, you'll be happy to hear that all of the V5 versions of these UL frame kits will ship with 8 motor mounting plates as standard. And I've also provided links in the video description to STL files for these legs, which you're going to secure to the bottom of the frame using double sided sticky tape and obviously the motor mounting screw as well. The combination of tape and screw does a really good job of firmly securing these legs and they're quick and easy to print as well. At the front of the frame, we have this brand new 7000 series anodized aluminum camera cage. And this is gonna be available from CNC drones in black, blue, green, or red, so you can match it to the rest of your build. And it supports exactly the same mounting approach as the previous V5 frames, which means that you can soft mount the DJI 03 camera with full ND filter support. You can soft mount the original um, V1 air unit DJI camera. You can hard mount any 19 millimeter FPV camera. And we have support for all sorts of 3D printed mounts for mounting just about any camera out there. And you're gonna be able to get the camera in the perfect position so that it's protected by this camera cage, but you don't see any camera cage in the FPV feed. Moving backwards from the front camera cage, you can see that I've mounted the DJI Air unit in the front stack position in this build. And that's where I'd recommend that you mount your VTX because the camera cable will easily stretch from the camera to the front stack position. And then the VTX is in the perfect position to make use of the two SMA antenna hard points on the top plate. These SMA antenna hard points are a really important feature of this frame design. And it's all about mitigating vibration from the antennas. If you're flying long range, you probably want to use a long barred pole style antenna like this so that you can get the emitter of the antenna far away from the frame and have a clear sight line from the antenna back to the receivers on your goggles. Traditionally, you'd mount an antenna like this on a TPU mount off the back of the frame. And this is really the worst possible option because you have a weight on the end of a really long stick mounted on a flexible TPU mount, and the weight is really far away from the center of mass of the quad. This means that you're gonna get vibration from the antenna. That vibration is gonna to create torque, 
which is going to rotate the quad and cause uh, noise in your gyro signal and also shaking or jello in your FPV footage from either your FPV camera or from a GoPro if you choose to mount a GoPro on the front of the frame. Moving the antennas to the midpoint and hard mounting them to the carbon fiber top plate really helps mitigate these issues. Now you've minimized the distance from the weight, the antenna emitter, to the center of mass of the quad. So that helps reduce the torque that's going to cause vibration problems. And you've also hard mounted the antenna rather than kind of mounting it on a flexible piece of TPU. So the antenna vibration frequency is much, much higher and easier to filter out, less likely to cause issues with the video. So these hard points allow you to use these longer antennas without having the um, issues with your footage and your tune that you would normally get mounting them off the back. The top plate also features captive battery strap slots and a 28 by 28 millimeter M3 GoPro mount. And I'll put a 3D printed GoPro mount for this on AOSRC.com. And you can also get different GoPro mounts from Brain3D as well. This is the same mounting as the AOS 5 V5. So any GoPro mount for that frame will also fit this frame. Let's take off these antennas and have a look at the underside of the frame. On the underside of the frame, you can see we have three stack mounting positions. We've got a 30 by 30, 25 by 25, and 20 by 20 mounting in the front and the rear. And the middle mounting is 30 by 30 or 20 by 20. And the 30 by 30 stack mount in the center is reinforced with press nuts, so you can get a really nice secure mounting for your stack screws. The motors that I recommend for this build are the AOS Supernova 2807 1400 kV motors. In my testing, these provide the best thrust to weight ratio of any 6S motor. And if you're looking for a build that's both lightweight and high performance for long range flying, then these motors are gonna be exactly what you're looking for. They're available from RC and Power and all good retailers. And I'll put links to those down in the video description as well. In terms of components of this build, I would recommend a 30 by 30 electronic stack with at least a 50 amp rated ESC, a 1000 microfarad 35 volt capacitor, and a 5000 milliamp hour 6S LiPo, or you could use a 6S 2P lithium ion pack as well. I'll put links to my recommended components down in the video description. Now that we've been through the UL7 V5 in detail, I'm gonna take you more quickly through the UL8 and UL10 V5 because they share all of the same features as the UL7. They're just designed for slightly larger props. You're gonna choose which frame is right for you based on the size of prop that you wanna to fit to it. The AOS UL8 V5 shares all of the same features as the UL7 we just looked at. It's just been expanded slightly for larger eight inch props. The arms are slightly thicker. We're now up to a 3.5 millimeter thick arm as opposed to the three millimeter on the UL7. And this is to support the slightly larger motor that you're gonna to want to use for an eight inch prop. I would recommend a 2808 size motor, about 1300 kV or so for an eight inch prop. And of course the vertical truss arm is plenty stiff enough to run this in an X8 configuration with two 2808s, one above and one below the arm. In terms of electronics, I would go with a slightly higher rated 55 amp 30 by 30 ESC for these larger eight inch motors. And you can also see that I've mounted a GPS on the back of this particular build. Uh, the 3D print for this is gonna be available at the links in the video description. In terms of battery choice for the UL8, you've got a lot of flexibility. Something like this 6,000 milliamp hour LiPo pack is gonna be suitable. You could choose to run a slightly smaller or larger pack than this, depending on what you wanna do. You could also run a higher voltage, maybe 8S, but I wouldn't go lower than 6S because you're just not gonna get the performance that you need from the motors. In terms of battery chemistry, um, a LiPo like this is gonna provide loads of performance, but not give you the longest flights. A lithium ion, uh, either a 6 or 8S, 2P or even 3P pack might be where it's at for getting the longest possible flight time. In terms of battery size and chemistry, please let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you're an experienced long range pilot, I'd love to get your recommendation on what battery you would expect people to be running on the UL7, UL8 and UL10. I think that'd be really interesting. If you're looking for the biggest, baddest, fastest and most efficient ultralight long range frame out there, then you found it. This is the AOS UL10 V5 and it shares all of the same great features as the UL7 and UL8 that we've looked at but it's expanded to fit 10 inch props and larger motors. I'd recommend running either a 3215 or maybe even a 3220 motor 
on these 10 inch tri blades and again the truss has been thickened and strengthened so that you can run this in either an x4 or an x8 configuration if you're running x8 i'd suggest 3215 motors and if you're going to go x4 either 3215 or maybe even 3220 motors to get the best possible performance in terms of battery you're going to be wanting to run either 6s but probably 8s on this guy to get the best performance 8s 900 kv motors is probably what i'd suggest on 10 inch props and for battery something like an 8 to maybe 10 amp hour lipo or a large 8s 4 or even 5p lithium ion pack is going to give you the power that you need for long range cruising or fast chase work for electronics, I'd recommend a 30 by 30 stack with at least an 8S 80 amp rated ESC. That's going to provide enough power for these larger 32 millimeter size motors. Now that you've seen these frames on the bench, it's time to dive a little bit deeper with a black box log analysis to see how the vibration and resonance performance of these frames stacks up. Let's start by taking a look at the UL7 V5 on the roll axis. And this is the raw gyro, so before any filtering has been applied in the flight controller. You can clearly see the two sweeps of motor noise. We've got one sweep at the motor RPM and a second sweep at three times the motor RPM. And that's very typical for tri-blade props. You're always gonna get noise at the motor frequency and three times the motor frequency because that's the blade passing frequency of the prop. Looking at the vibration performance of the frame, you can see that overall the frame is incredibly quiet. Apart from the sweeps of motor noise, we really don't have much noise anywhere else in this signal. If you're used to reading black box logs, you might just be able to spot the first frame resonance of this frame, but it's up at 200 hertz. Now that would be pretty impressive for a five inch freestyle frame. And for a seven inch frame, I mean, it's just going to fly and tune exactly like the best five inch you've ever flown. You're gonna be able to get rid of all of this noise with RPM filtering and maybe just a single dynamic notch, although it's questionable whether you even need that. And then you're going to be able to raise all your D-term filtering and gyro filtering up to a nice high level because there's just no noise really below about 160 hertz with the UR7 V5. Moving over to the pitch axis now, again we're looking at the raw gyro and there's just no frame resonances visible on pitch at all. Pitch is slightly better damped than roll because I've got a long battery, so that's why we see a little bit less noise overall but there's no frame resonances and RPM filtering is all you need to take care of these two sweeps of motor noise. You won't need any gyro filtering and you can raise your D-term filtering at least to the level that you would for a typical five inch, maybe even higher. Just to finish off, we're gonna look at the yaw axis and I mean, there's nothing really to see here on yaw at all. Again, we've got the motor noise, but no other noise apart from just that vibration from the prop and motor itself no frame resonances, no vibrations from the frame. Also, I've got long barred pole antennas on this build and we don't see any vibrations from the antennas, which is showing that the hard SMA mount points, the hard points on the top plate of the frame are working to help stop those antennas vibrating and stop that vibration getting through into the flight controller. All right, so now let's look at the other end of the spectrum with the AOS UL10. And here we're looking at the roll axis, the raw gyro before any filtering has been applied. And we can clearly see the two broad sweeps of motor noise at the motor RPM and three times the motor RPM, again, because we're using tri-blade props. I really struggle here to see any evidence of any vibration either from the frame or from the antennas. And I am using long barred pole style antennas on this build as well, just to try and make it representative for those of you who want to fly long range. I know that there is from simulation a frame resonance at about 160 hertz and maybe you can just barely see it there it's very very quiet um needless to say this isn't going to cause you a problem in flight at all 160 hertz is well you're only hitting that frequency when you're above 50 percent throttle so it's very very easy to filter out that frequency with rpm filtering you don't even need a dynamic notch to take care of this just rpm filtering is going to be more than enough and then if you're looking at lower frequencies, I mean, it's just very, very quiet. So you could be confident to run minimal filtering, minimal determ filtering, and turn those PID gains up nice and high to keep the frame locked to your sticks as you fly it. Checking the pitch axis, I mean, similar to the UL7, there's a bit more damping on the pitch axis because I'm running the battery lengthways. So we don't see any evidence really of frame resonances at all in this, in this plot. 
and everything is very, very quiet at low frequencies and high frequencies. Everywhere apart from exactly where the motors are generating noise is super quiet and the frame is doing a really good job controlling all those vibrations. Finally, we'll take a look at the U-axis for the UL10 V5 and I mean, again, there's nothing really to see here. It's very, very quiet, both at low frequencies and high frequencies. You can just sort of see a little bit of the motor noise um, just coming from the motors and props, but that is gonna be easily taken care of by RPM filtering in beta flight. So it's nothing you need to worry about. Just for completeness, let's take a look at the UL8 now. And on roll, we see similar performance to what we saw with the UL7 and UL10 two sweeps of motor noise and the barest hint of a first frame resonance, this time at 180 hertz, which is a really good frequency even for a five inch drone. So you're not gonna have any issues tuning the AOS UL8, and I'm gonna be taking advantage of this performance when I do the preset for this drone. Looking now at the pitch axis, and again with the battery running lengthways, we've got a bit more damping, so we see two sweeps of motor noise and no hint of any frame resonances at all. And on your axis, it's the same story. We see two sweeps of motor noise, although they're much quieter on your than they were on pitch and roll, and that's very typical, and no hint of frame resonance here either. Now that you've seen the AOS UL7, 8 and 10 V5 on the bench and in black box log analysis, I'm hoping that you'll be keen to try out one of these frames for yourself. If you're looking for a fast, efficient and lightweight frame for open freestyle, long range cruising or fast chase work, I think these are going to be a great option for you. Currently, they're available direct from CNC drones, and you can get a choice of different camera cage and standoff colors to match the other components of your build. And I think Nick is also going to be offering these frames in colored carbon fiber in the fullness of time, if you're looking for something truly unique. Everything you need, including links to the website where you can buy the frames, all the build guides, tuning guides, 3D prints, everything you need to help get your frame built and flying just the way you want it, all of that's down in the video description. And if you have any questions, please drop me a comment in the video or just email me, chris at aosrc.com. That's all I have for you for today. So all that remains is for me to leave you with a little bit more footage from the AOS UL7 V5. And just to say, thank you so much for your support and very, very happy flying.